Hello everyone and a very warm welcome to Economicspedia. So I hope you are preparing well for the upcoming exams although there has been a rescheduling in the exams due to this COVID lockdown but don't stop or even give a simple little bit of relaxation in your preparation. Okay? Alright, so today we are here uh, to discuss a very important topic from microeconomics area and the topic is compensating variation and equivalent variation okay i'm not going to discuss the very detailed thing but the very important and conceptual areas that you cannot miss out in order to prepare for this competitive exams so starting with this compensating variation and equivalent variation these two terms or the concepts comes into microeconomics when we talk about consumer surplus mainly consumer surplus because in that area this compensating variation and equivalent variation come up now what exactly this compensating variation and equivalent variation is so this is the main discussion of this session and uh, followed by that we will not only be giving you a theoretical overview of the whole area but we will also be discussing the same thing with respect to a diagram in order that you understand the concepts very minutely so starting with this compensating variation i'm going to write compensating variation as cv and equivalent variation as ev okay so talking about compensating variation or cv it mainly refers to a situation suppose if there is a fall in the price of any one of the goods for simplicity let's take two goods let it be x1 let it be x1 and x2 okay and the prices so x1 has the price of p1 and x2 has the price of P2. So this is the initial situation I am talking about. Initial situation. Okay. Now let us suppose that the price of the any of the two goods change. That means let's say it reduces. So taking P1 dash which is lesser than P1. So the price of X1 has fallen. And price of X2 remains as it is. So this is P2. This is the final situation. Alright. So with this current scenario that there is a fall in the price of X1. With this scenario I will be mainly explaining the difference and the concept of compensating variations and the equivalent variation so starting with this compensating variation this implies a situation that the consumer under this reduced price the consumer is willing to pay a certain amount of money so that the consumer or the individual can have the initial level of satisfaction or utility what i'm trying to say is that we are talking about this compensating variation okay so this is a situation compensating variation i have said that this is mainly we can treat it if there is a fall in price of x1 then we can say that compensating variation represents the willingness to pay Okay, so this is willingness to pay. Why he will give up the money? So in other words, we can say that willing to give up certain amount of money. So why the consumer is willing to do these things? So that in the final situation also, the 
consumer can have the initial level of utility or satisfaction. That means the consumer in the changed price situation also the consumer wants to have the initial level of combination. Uh, the consumer wants to be at the initial IC where he can have his original utility level or satisfaction level. So this is what the compensating variation implies. Willingness to pay. Now what is equivalent variation? So talking about equivalent variation, it is simply the opposite of compensating variation. So compensating variation is willingness to pay. Here EV that is equivalent variation is willingness to accept. Willingness to accept in a situation when we have a fall in the price of any of the goods. So here we can say that it is the willingness to accept or in other words we can say that the money needs to be given to the consumers or willing to accept that is I have written so money given to the consumer. So why the individual is given some amount of money and one more thing that is the very important detailed difference between the compensating and the equivalent variation it is that the compensating variation talks about the final situation. Whereas equivalent variation talks about the situation when it is initial. That means here the price has not changed. But what is eventually happening? The price of good X1 is reducing. Right? Okay. Be with me now. So the price is reducing. That is why we are giving some amount of money to the consumer in the initial situation so that in the final situation when the price actually changed where the price has fallen in that scenario also the individual's consumer or the satisfaction level does not change getting it so let me just give you a brief recap of the two things compensating versus equivalent variation so on number one Compensating variation is willingness to pay or the amount of money that will be given up by the individual in order to have the same amount of satisfaction or utility compared to the initial situation. Number one of equivalent variation. So equivalent variation is willingness to accept. That means some amount of money needs to be given to the consumer so that he can have the initial level of uh, satisfaction in the final situation. So with this we are good to move to the second point of compensating and equivalent variation. So compensating variation takes place in the final situation. Whereas on the other hand the equivalent variation takes place in the initial situation. So the equivalent in any equivalent variation the money will be given to the consumers in the initial period so that his satisfaction or utility level remains unchanged. Whereas in the compensating variation the money has been uh, taken up from the individual in the final situation so that his utility level remains constant. Okay, I hope we are good to go to the next section that is the diagrammatic representation and I also hope that you have understood this theory very clearly. Even if you have not, please don't hesitate to let us know by commenting below in the comment section. Now, for those who have understood, kudos to you guys. And for those who have a little bit of doubt, well, you are also going to get your kudos because we are also going to discuss the same thing, not just theoretically, but also diagrammatically. So let's move to that section. So the diagrammatic representation, we will be doing it like this. So this is the price and this is quantity. I am going to represent one by one so that you can actually very clearly understand. Now, let's suppose this is my initial budget line, AB. And let's say price of good one, that is P1, reduced 
to P1 dash. So P1 dash is less than P1. This is the scenario. So because of this, the horizontal intercept will increase. And our new budget line looks somewhat like this. AB dash. Okay. So first I am talking about CB. Initial situation AB. And after the price change, our budget line is AB dash. Okay. So let us say in the initial situation, my IC somewhat looks like this. Let's say this is IC naught. And in the final situation, again the IC looks somewhat like this. Let this be IC1. Okay. I am marking it as 0.1 and this as 2. So, compensating variation takes place in the final situation. That means when this price has already fallen. Then we are going to have the situation of compensating variation. So, this is the final budget line AB dashed. In order to capture the CV, we need to draw a parallel line through this parallel line to AB dash. That is the final budget line. And we have to draw it in such a way that the, the individual's utility levels remain as it is that was in the initial situation. That means the new budget line that we, have go, that we are going to draw in order to capture this compensating variation is has to pass through the original IC that is IC naught and it has to also be parallel to the final budget line. So I am drawing it as a dotted line so that you can understand. Okay, so this dotted line, I hope you can see. This is the line. Let me mark it CD. Okay, so this is the point, marking it as 3. So this is the point where CD, which is parallel to AB dash and passing through IC naught. And this, the gap between the two intercepts, that is A and C, is my compensating variation. Okay, so this is how diagrammatically we can represent it. Now let's move to the equivalent variation portion. Okay, so this is for the equivalent variation portion and the basic pattern remains the same that is AB is the initial budget line and AB dash is the final budget line after there is a fall in the price of good I1. So, equivalent variation takes place in the initial scenario when there is no change in the prices. Okay, so so in, in such a way, the main reason that it has been done so that in the final scenario also the individual's con utility level remains the same. Isn't it? So because of that, in order to capture the equivalent variation, we need to draw a parallel line with the initial budget line that is AB. And the, the new budget line that we are going to draw right now, it has to pass through the final IC that is IC1. So let me mark it here IC0 and this is IC1. So it has to pass through this IC1. Let's see how it looks like. So we have to draw it as a parallel line to AB. This is the dotted line that I am drawing. Bolding it a bit. Let me bold it. Okay. All right. So this thick line you can see, this is the new budget line. I am here marking it as C dashed and D dashed. Alright. And finally marking the point as 4, this is the point 4.
this is the point 4 that I am talking about the new equilibrium in the equivalent variation ok now what is the equivalent variation the gap between this A and C dash this is the equivalent variation portion that we have we are talking about ok so this is how you can also represent the compensating and the equivalent variation that most of you have read it only theoretically in a diagrammatic format and I really hope that you have understood each and every concept for this and if you have any kind of further problem or queries related to this uh, session of today or any other economical area please feel free to contact us through our official mail id and uh, very thank you for supporting us and following us thank you for watching this see you in the next one